Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, whatever time it is when you're listening to this Daily Dose. I want to just uh, remind us this past Sunday, Pastor Eric preached, actually last two Sundays from 1 Corinthians, and just give you a heads up, he's going to be in 2 Corinthians this Sunday as we work our, just take our journey through the whole New Testament in 2023. So go ahead and try to do 2 Corinthians all in one sitting sometime before Sunday. And I just want to, uh, so this past Sunday he shared specifically, he went through 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And of course it's about the gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy. And I wanted to share with you uh, my story this morning of, of eagerly desiring and praying for specifically the gift of tongues and just how that happened for me. I want to start, let's just, uh, let me just read quickly in part of uh, 1 Corinthians 14 there, just give us some context. It says, starting verse 1, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. And I want to just go down to the bottom of 14, where it says, Therefore, brethren, earnly, desire earnestly to prophesy, and do not first forbid to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. And of course, we know in chapter 13, right before this, is the love chapter. So, in talking about uh spiritual gifts, that it's all used for love. It's used for building each other up, for building up the body. And in, in the case of tongues, generally speaking, it's edifying yourself. It's uh, having a conversation with God, but also there's interpretation of that. They can edify the whole church. So my testimony, my story, I've not really shared this publicly. I've told a, a couple of people my story um, of receiving uh, spiritual gifts, specifically this, the gift of tongues, is about a, uh, about 15 years ago or so that this happened for me. And so anyway, I thought I would just share it all with you all today, um, just on the heels of, of Pastor Eric's uh, sermon Sunday and, and this topic. So I grew up in a, in a denomination that never, we didn't, there wasn't practice of spiritual gifts. I don't know if I don't even know how it was taught in it. I don't remember, like, if we got to those scriptures, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. I don't know what we did with those. But anyway, I just didn't, didn't have any understanding or knowledge of that. And when my wife and I first got married and living in the valley here, we went to a Word of Grace. A coworker invited me to that church. And so we really liked it. We, we connected there. And Pastor Gary uh, Kinneman was the, was the pastor at that time. And sometime within those first year or two, let's say, of him... Uh, of us going to that church, he actually did a series on spiritual gifts and went through, you know, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 and 14. And I was encouraged to, um, just from his sermon, like, well, I should go after spiritual gifts. And just for whatever reason, I decided I wanted to go, I wanted to ask for the gift of uh, tongues, of speaking to the Lord in this prayer language. I'd seen it kind of used around me in smaller settings and things, and people testified how it was just beneficial to them. So I began eagerly desiring, I began praying and asking the Lord for this gift. And somewhere along the way of his series, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was at Word of Grace, but it, you know how dreams are like, that wasn't really Word of Grace. We were in this outside courtyard. It was kind of enclosed, but open to the sky. Pastor Gary Kinneman was there. Um, one of the, the main worship leader was there playing music, and there were other pastors and leaders there, and I was there for some reason. And I, uh, in the dream, I just started, we were worshiping maybe, and I, I just started speaking in tongues. And I woke up that morning, and I was immediately like, was that real? Did I just, did I just pray or sing or worship in tongues? I didn't, I didn't really know, and I had to go to work, you know, I got up, and so, of course, it's time to go to work, probably, and uh, so I didn't do much more with it other than I was continuing to pray and, and to desire this gift. Well, fast forward maybe a few weeks or a month later, uh, we had a men's retreat up at Bison Ranch up in northern Arizona with, with Word of Grace, and 
uh, you know, Pastor Gary was the main speaker. It was a Friday night. We had a worship service with, with some teaching, but just a, a lot of worship. And it's funny because Pastor Eric was actually there. I, I had maybe met him, but didn't know him. He was the bass player um, at that time. And so there was altar calls, opportunity to go forward. And, and I said, you know what? I'm going to go forward and I'm going to ask for just people to agree with me for this, to receive this gift of, of tongues specifically. So I went up and I got this pastor uh, who connected me immediately. And he was very zealous. And he was just like, as I'm telling him, he's like, yeah, let's pray. Let's ask, you know, the Lord for this. And he's like, he's praying for me. And he's like, okay, now just start moving your mouth and start moving your life. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to force something. Like if it happens, it's going to happen. And I don't know, it's just the engineer in me, but, um, and so nothing was happening. So he kind of backed off and I'm just, I'm just worshiping up there. The, the worship band's going, you know, the same worship leader from my dream and, uh, and nothing's happening. And, and this, this, uh, he was an usher in the church. His name was Kevin and just this super gentle, uh, nice guy and he was just going around he was just praying for people like because there was you know kind of a line of people that were to my left and right and uh, so I'm up there I got my eyes closed and, and he walks up to me and I didn't know he was behind me and he just puts his hand on me just agree whatever I'm praying for just agree with me and as soon as his hand hit my shoulder it was just like this this language started to explode out of me and I just I started I started praying in tongues and I did it for I don't know maybe five seconds maybe ten seconds and I stopped and I was like whoa and the pastor that was standing there was like, no, keep going. So they just kind of left me alone. And I just worshiped the Lord that way. And uh, it was just a very cool experience. And so I, I uh, you know, I use it mostly privately. I'll just pray in tongues privately. Sometimes if I'm in a meeting, I'll just do it really quietly. I don't, I don't want to be a distraction. You know, 1 Corinthians 13 really reminds us that things are to be done in love and for the upbuilding of the church. So anyway, I hope that's helpful for you. That was just my story. And, and the Lord continues to give me, you know, different giftings. Um, as time goes on, as I pray and just ask for things. And so uh, my encouragement to you is just whatever it is, just eagerly desire, you know, gifts as, as we're commanded to in the word, as we're instructed to, and it's for our benefit. It's not a, it's, it doesn't, it's not a measure of salvation or like your great faith or anything like that. It's just, it's just asking the Lord for what he's offered us. So I hope that's helpful for you just hearing my own kind of personal story with it. And I hope you have a great day.